So she already worked one week or two, <laughs> two weeks already uh, here. So I'm so happy. My son, uh, it's uh, in graduation with the friends for this weekend. My daughter is coming in two or three more weeks. So we'll be together for a while. Well, for, for now. And thank you for, for everything. I don't see John. Say hi. <laughs> uh, uh, they, we stayed there in John's place. It was nice. It's an experience, closer experience with my son. You know, in September, who's, who knows he's going for school for Loma Linda. Pray for him. I don't know when is he. I don't know when is he coming back. But that's how it is. In heaven we'll be together always. We're staying in Lapine for this time until we got uh, our keys for our, our, our place here. And hopefully everything will go well. Today we're going to talk about uh, one of the areas of our, the four areas of our mission. Jesus, before he left, he said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and give you power. Amen? The Holy Spirit will come upon you and will give you power. Then you will tell everyone about me, number one, in Jerusalem, number two, in Judea, number three, in Samaria, Number four, and everywhere in the world. Amen? So we're going to start today about this series, and we're going to talk today about Noah. Noah saved his family. Amen? Uh, how many parents here? Father? Amen. Mother? Amen. It, children, you have, you still have your 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 father, your parent. Okay, Noah, Noah is for me a, one of the ideals of family. All right, family is not just uh, to have kids and success for this life. All right. Not just in school or in the best job or, you know, with great friends in the best school. Noah, for me, is the father, the best father of the whole story of the families in the whole Bible. Imagine Noah's wife. She was... One of the greatest wives in the whole Bible. She was so loving. She was so kind. Great mom. Understanding. With the great patience with the kids. Even they were already married. But she was still Dealing with the family, with the kids and wives. So for me, Noah's family is something special. It could be ideal for us. But more than that, Noah saved his family. Amen? Noah saved his family. You can have the best husband. You can have the best wife. Best kids. 
best parents. But don't forget about salvation. Noah saved his family. I'm going to read again in, the, in Hebrews 11, verse 7. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned and of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark. For what? For the saving of his household. He prepared the earth, the ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became her of the righteousness which is according to faith. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. for being so good to all of us. It was a great week. We had some challenges, some difficulties, but you were there always as a friend, as a father, to take us out from any negative circumstances. And thank you for opening your arms here to worship you, to praise your name. Please accept our hearts, accept our families. We're maybe not perfect, but please teach us, tell us how to save our family. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It was by faith that Noah heard God's warnings about things he could not yet see. He obeyed God and built a large boat to save his family. He didn't do just the work. He wasn't just a servant. He wasn't just a, a, a member of God's family. He was not just a leader among those uh, great people in his time. But he obeyed God. Amen? The principle to have good family is to obey God. To put God first and build a large both to save his family. Family is important. I learned many things from my grandma. I lived with her about four or five years along with her. And then I lived five years with my mom and my sister. My older brother visited us from time to time. When I was 19 years old, after the first year of college, I wanted to meet my, da my dad, and I went to see him in person. Family is important. Family can be different from this world when we obey God, when we have God in our family. Genesis 7, 1 says, The Lord told Noah, Take your whole family, not just one, the whole family, not just your wife, the whole family with you into the boat. Because you are the only one on this earth who pleases me, praise God. Maybe you are the only one who pleases God in your neighborhood, among your friends, in your 
city, in your place. Noah was somebody special for God. First Peter chapter 3 verse 20 says, When God's patience waited in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved. Eight persons only were saved. How many, how many will be saved when Jesus comes? When the door closes, when the day approaches, how we are doing? How is our family? Are you working towards your family in order to, to, for them to be saved? Is you, is you willing, are you willing to save your family? Ellen G. White says in Spiritual Gifts, Volume 3, page 64, Noah was to preach to the people and also to prepare an ark as God should direct him for the saving of himself and family. He was building to save himself and his family. Remember, you study the Bible because you're interested in salvation. Amen? You want to you wanna take a look at the Bible and, 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 and search some passage in order to share with the family. God wanted to save him and his family. He was not only to preach, but his example in building the ark was to convince all that he believed what he preached. So, we don't preach only by words. We don't preach only here. We don't speak about the word just in the church. By our example, by our testimony, we are preaching where we live. We preach every day at our homes. We preach to, to the wife, to the husband, every time, all the time to our kids. We saying things from the Bible. We telling the truth. But sometimes... We forget. We need to remember Noah, Noah's family. That's, that's the ideal. Put in your mind, picture. Don't forget Noah's family. If you need to uh, re re recover your family for salvation, please do it. You're in the right time. Proverbs 22, 6 says, Train up your child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Train your children. Disciple your children. Teach them. Even, Sister White says, before the child is born, you can talk, you can preach, you can teach, you can sing songs about our friend Jesus Christ. Disciple. Before we pass to history, if Jesus don't come yet, who's going to lead the church? Our kids, the younger generations, all right? So we have to train them. Deuteronomy 6 says, you shall love the Lord your God. Amen? Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, 
with all your, your, your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. Amen? Loving God. Of course, you, you, you want to teach the beast, you know, the Sunday law. Those, those things, it comes, you know. But first of all, teach them loving God. That's the main thing. You know, if you want to bring someone to the church, someone to, to join us, you have to be smart. You have to preach about God's love. That comes first. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. Diligently to your children. Be, be effective in teaching your kids. Take your time. Pray. Good amount of time. Pray and study the word. So you can teach diligently to your children. And shall talk. Of them, when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up, all the way, all the time, every time, preach to your children. My son, keep your father's commands and don't forget your mother's teachings. So, not only the fathers have to preach. We have to preach the kids, the sons. We should preach it to our parents as well. It's the whole family. Okay, it's, it's not just the responsibility. They fail. No, no, no. no. You, you, you find your Bible and teach your parents. My son, keep your father's commands. Is in both ways. And don't forget your mother's teaching. You have in your heart whatever your mother taught you. And you can teach to others. And you can, you can share with your parents again. But look at this verse. But from eternity to eternity the Lord's Faithful love is towards those who fear him and his righteousness towards the grandchildren of those who keep his covenant, who remember to observe his precepts. In family, in our homes, sometimes our grandchildren live with us. We have to preach to them. Even If, they're, if they lived in the, in the next city, preach to them. They're your family. You know? I don't know if I'm going to have grandchildren. But I would like to, 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 to have a joy for the eternity. To have my grandchildren. Uh, my daughter's husband. My son's wife. You know? All together in heaven. That would be awesome. You know, we have to, we have to uh, realize, you know, we have to focus in, in our family. Family is, is, is the most important thing in, in life. Grandchildren are the crowning glory of the aged. Parents are the pride of their children. See Our first feel of the mission of Jesus for the disciples, for the church, is home. Jerusalem is our home, our place. Now, let's see. Who is the best son-in-law here? Or daughter-in-law? I, I heard once... That I think was one of my first evangelistic series when I got to the United States. The preacher, the evangelist said, oh, I love my mother-in-law. Oh, he repeatedly said, 
But he said at the end, I always want her 1,500 miles from me. Wow. I didn't get it at that moment. Sometimes it's no, no accordance, no communion with us, with a son-in-law, daughter-in-law, father-in-law, mother-in-law. But I love Peter. I think Jerry is like Peter. Simon Peter is, is, is a cool disciple for me. You know, after leaving the church, the synagogue, that day it was a Sabbath day. Jesus went to Simon's home where he found Simon's mother-in-law very sick with a high fever. See, the, the, the son-in-law took Jesus Christ, the healer, the great physician, to his home to heal because he loved his mother-in-law. Amen. If you have a mother-in-law, please show love, show mercy, tell about Jesus. From time to time, I had the privilege to have my house, my father-in-law, and my mother-in-law. During COVID, we had we had a we broadcasted by Facebook to our churches, and he was early, my father-in-law, ready, with his suit, with his tie, because he was gonna worship God. Amen. Even, uh, even I was alone and few of us. He was ready. It was inspiration for me to have my father-in-law. He rest in peace. Maybe one of these days my mother-in-law will come. And you will know her. I admire my wife. Because she, she had, we had my mom for more than 20 years with us. She has one more older brother, me, my sister. But mainly, she stayed with us. See, Peter was a great disciple. Please heal her. Everyone back to him. Standing at her beside, he rebuked the fever and it left her. And she got up at once and prepared a meal for them. Prepare a meal for Jesus Christ. You know, bring Jesus, bring the word to your in-laws. They're our family. Paul says in 1 Timothy, if a widow has children or grandchildren, all right, let them first learn to do their duty to their own family and to repay their parents or grandparents. That pleases God. I heard one lady, 91 years old, she didn't want any assistance at all. She's very independent, she's capable, she's healthy. But the daughter comes often to see her. But she doesn't want a nurse or any help. But sometimes, at the 90 years old, we'll need some help. They need some help. We're the kids. We're the grandchildren. You know? Sometimes we focus in ourselves to spend 
a lot of money, and we don't have money for our parents. We don't have money for our grand grandparents. Second Timothy 5, I remember, remember your true faith. That faith first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. Where's Lois? I don't see her. All right, say hi for me. Eunice, where's Eunice? She left. What's that? Mother-in-law, no, no, the grandmother of Timothy and the mother of Timothy. I remember your true faith that comes. That faith first lived in your grandmother, Louis, and in your mother, Eunice. And I know, you know, you now have that same faith. See? Picture However is your faith, it could be the same faith of your son, your grandson. It continues that blessing. Verse 6, I remind you to keep using the gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. He was not just a, a preacher, he was a young pastor. Let it grow as a small flame grows into fire. God did not give us a spirit that makes us afraid, but spirit of power and love and self-control. Amen? By Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can go forward. Please don't get discouraged if your family is disorganized. So you, you, you know my family, it's, it was broken family all over. But thanks to my wife, now I have a beautiful family. Second Timothy 3 says, you should continue following the teachings of you, you learned. You now are true because you trust those who taught you. Since you were a child, you have known the Holy Scriptures, we are, which are able to make you wise, wise. And that wisdom leads you to where? For, to salvation. Amen? Through faith in Jesus Christ. You know the Scripture. It gives you salvation. Leads you into salvation. Please, Open your Bible all the day, always. If you, don't, if you don't have the book anymore, if you don't like the book anymore, open your computer. Open your device, your cell phone to see the scripture. The scripture gives you salvation, gives you the knowledge for salvation. Without the Bible, forget it. We're lost. Act 16. It was a, how you say, jailer who worked in the prison unjustly. Paul and Silas, you know, went there. And verse 31 says, So they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Because he was, he was going to kill himself. Because it, it, God opened the doors, the gates of the prison. He broke everything. When earthquake came to free God's messengers. But they didn't run away. They didn't escape. You know why? We don't... We don't hide in the mountains. We don't escape. Why? If Jesus is with us, why are we going to hide? 
Don't worry about persecution. He's in control. Don't worry. Don't worry about Sunday law. It's going to come. Whatever happens, God is in control of his children. He will send his angels to take care of you. Don't worry. However, they have your phone number. They have your social security number. They have all your identity. How can we hide in this world? Even if you go to Mexico or to the other side of the world, they can find you. But Jesus is where? Everywhere. Jesus is with his people. So he was going to kill himself. And Paul and Silas were beat up with the scars and bruises. They were singing. They were praising Jesus Christ. Amen. That's how it is. Whatever happens to you. You know, if you if you living before God, no no problem. They didn't left. They they said, "Don't worry. Just believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. You and your household." Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him. And to the whole who were in his house. Wow, that night was powerful. Verse 33 says, And he took them the same hour to the night and washed their stripes. And immediately he and all his family were baptized. Wow. The Bible is connected with salvation. The Bible is connected with baptism. Baptism is the result of the people who wants to be baptized, who wants to be saved. Now, when he had brought them into his house, he set food before them, and he rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. However is your work, your job, you know, Jesus is there. If he's not there, he will come. He'll see you. He'll see your co-workers. He'll see the place where you work. He's everywhere. I just found this baptism in Man's Pool, in Lusaka, Zambia, Africa. You know, they, they were baptized only 1,335 people for, for the glory of God. Amen? Wow, this is amazing. I wish we can baptize somebody here Somebody in your family. Somebody in your household. If you're not baptized, think about this. Salvation, it's basically connected with baptism. Baptism is because you are going to be saved when Jesus comes. So, I would like to invite you today to preach, give the good news at your home every day. Preach to your wife, preach to your husband, preach to your kids, to your grandkids, to your in-laws, preach the gospel. Our responsibility is, we have four areas of our mission. The Holy Spirit will come, said Jesus, upon you and give you power. The only power who can move you is the Holy Spirit. Then you will tell everyone 
about me in Jerusalem, about Jesus in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is our home. And then we'll go to Judea. And then we'll go to Samaria, even to the enemies, to the end of the world. Amen? I would like to ask you, if you're willing, only if you're willing, would you like to preach in your house? How many of you? I would like for you to stand up, and I would like to ask God in this hour to give us the power of the Holy Spirit so we can be great testimony. I want to dedicate myself. I hope I won't be too, too much of time without my wife anymore. <laughs> Three months or too much. But I have to be here. And she was working there. We didn't have a house yet until two more, three more weeks. So I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. And I will be a better preacher in my house. Better husband, better father, better son. If you want to do it, please stand up. I, wanna, I would like to pray. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we have to be your disciples, your servants. Sometimes we don't preach enough, we don't do enough. Sometimes our families are broken and need. Please visit us, be with us, and touch our lives for salvation. Thank you for the example of Noah and his family. He was saved with his family. Because he was so busy in your work. Preparing the ark for him and his family and for others. And also preaching the gospel. Please give us the opportunity to be busy in your work with our family. So we can be prepared for salvation. Accept us as we are today, O oh Lord. We pray that the Holy Spirit can give us that promised power so we can be witness, we can tell everyone. But we want to start in our home. Please, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.